Hey honeys, Libba Hang here and I'm back with another video. So in today's video, we're going to be touching on the topic of cohabiting, aka fat and sit. And I'm just going to be sharing with you guys my experience and just answering a few questions that you guys had on the whole situation. Um, so if you're new to my channel, hey, welcome, click the subscribe. Ooh. So if you're new to my channel, hey, welcome, click the subscribe button and the notification button, which is the little bell, honey, if you know when I post. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey, what it do, what it is. <laughs> I'll also be showing you guys my updated makeup routine. Things have changed. I have improved. I found new hacks. As you guys can see, I look stunning, darling. So if you guys are interested in knowing more about the products I used and just the steps I take to achieve this makeup look, then do stay tuned and stay watching. But other than that, let me not say too much and let's jump straight into the video, darling. Okay, so I've already done my eyebrows off camera. So, um, basically, this video, I'm going to be showing you guys my updated everyday makeup routine. It has completely changed, you know, I feel like my makeup has improved and it's time for me to share with you guys what I do, what I use, and, you know, just the ins and outs of everything. I just hope that while speaking on the topics that I want to speak on in this video, I will be able to still talk about the makeup products and show you guys what I'm using and all that jazz. So basically, how this video came about is I was on live on Instagram one night and I got asked a question that is actually quite interesting, if I should say. Um, someone was basically asking me, like, what's my experience with cohabiting and, um, like, what's my take on it? What are my opinions on it? You know, things like that. So basically, for those of you who don't know... Or a bit clueless with the word cohabiting. Basically, it's like fat and sit. For my South Africans, give fat and sit. So basically, fat and sit, for those of you who still don't know, fat and sit is staying with your partner unmarried. That's basically what it is. So I do have an experience. I do have um, quite a lot to say, actually, about this whole cohabiting situation this fat and sit situation because um for some of you who might know this some of you might not know this but um a whole entire first year imagine that a whole entire first year was cohabiting with her boyfriend ex-boyfriend okay before i even carry on i'm using the um baby skin primer so that's what i just use now on my face now i'm about to go in with the yardley loose powder sorry it's a bit messy my makeup bag is so messy because things just keep spilling i really want to get a new one i don't want to clean it but this is what i'm going to go with go in with now this is what i do before putting on my foundation because i don't know it just goes in better with the powder on top but anyway as i was saying i was a whole entire first year who was staying with her ex-boyfriend and guys it was not easy okay it was not easy in terms of number one trying to hide it from my parents most importantly my mom actually um and my sister what else um it was not easy in terms of just the situation itself because i was not only cohabiting with my boyfriend i was cohabiting with well my ex-boyfriend i was cohabiting with my ex-boyfriend who was way older than me i wouldn't really say way older i think seven ages older i was 19 he was 27 do the math but yeah so it's not too far apart actually so um yeah it was just a very as much as it is quite nice to cohabit it's not easy and i will share with you guys the pros and cons in my opinion from my experience of cohabiting with your partner okay i'm gonna go in with the lasting finish Rimmel london um foundation in the shade caramel i think golden caramel sorry because i am golden as you can see by my skin tone sweetie 
but anyway so um yeah guys uh so my first year was not a very tough year you guys know that like first year is not really as tough you know you're still trying to build the foundation of all your next years to come so it's not as difficult as second year and all that so that was like a very i was very lucky actually to have a very easy first year because had it been difficult i feel like i would have failed how i passed first year i don't even know guys because my whole life literally revolved around my relationship and just like you know living in a like as a Oh, how do I even explain this? Firstly, when you fat and sit, I don't like that word. I don't know, it just sounds so vulgar, <laughs> even though I don't think it is. But um, you start having responsibilities. That's one thing also I don't like about it. You start having responsibilities. And for me, it was worse. My responsibilities were even more because just a lot of people were staying in that place as well so it was not just me and my partner it was me my partner and um like other people as well um there was just always people at the house um it was just a whole lot you know and yeah i the way i handled it like shout out to me i learned quite a lot actually in that year um cohabiting with this person I learned how to cook actually i don't know how to cook before that um my mom has tried to teach me numerous times to like cook and stuff and i just really showed no interest at all whenever she would try and teach me and stuff i just really had no interest in cooking but obviously now that like i'm staying with my partner at the time um i had to cook like i had to make that person meals i had to you know you can't really just be a woman in a house and not cook you know just sit around not do anything not cook not clean had to clean um it was a lot guys it was really a lot i really hardly found time to focus on schoolwork to sit down do schoolwork i mean i did but barely because number one it was like a very busy household um so i didn't really have like quiet time to like sit and really focus and do my schoolwork was just always busy and i got distracted as well because like i mean like everybody's in the house everybody's having fun and i'm there trying to like study so i would try oh excuse me i would try like rush the process just so i can go chill with everybody else it was just a whole lot okay um when it came to like hiding it from my parents or like more specifically my mom or my sister because they're the ones that would call often i would literally have to go outside where there's no noise and call my um and answer the calls and speak to my sister and my mom or who whichever family member would call you know so that was the psyche part about like struggling to hide it from them um So yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah, I think th that's probably like the only negative thing I experienced about this whole cohabiting thing. And also, if like you are fully dependent on staying there and you don't have another place of residence just in case, you know, because I mean like partners do get tired of each other and one might need a break. So you just need like an alternative place to go just in case things like that come up or issues like that arise so um luckily for me um as you guys know i did stay in for my first two years of studying so i was still staying at that time but it was not open yet so i would constantly go home and then I would want to come back to Cape Town like just to see my person and stuff and 
um i just hope my mom's not watching this but i would lie and be like no they open um they said i can come back you know so i will have my room you know just so that i have a place to stay so my mom can be content that like okay she's going back to res and she has a place to stay but they weren't actually really open sometimes like when i would go back early and there came a point where like i don't know my partner felt like no my partner at the time felt like no you know what i need a break i feel like we just need time apart from each other for a while because we've been staying together and 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 i was just like a bit stressed because i'm like dude res is not open and here i am because you called me here and the funny part is my partner at the time would constantly say like no when are you coming back when are you coming back whenever i would go back home he'd always like rush the process of me coming back to cape town because i don't know he missed me or whatever the case was and i would always want to come back but now there were times where he would also rush for me to like go back home so moments like that were quite stressful so if there's any advice i would give i would say put a lot of thought into it because i mean you really do need to prepare for the worst um yeah because now if this person's tired of you or you guys have a fight and things like that you really do need to have a backup you need to have a place that you'll be able to go to if such things do happen one bad thing i one bad decision i made as well while um habiting is i literally was always in the house i hardly went out with my friends um i hardly did all the things i love to do hardly posted on youtube because number one i was just always busy i was just always tired and i was around people that you can't really film around and also i couldn't film them either because like my family does watch my videos and they would end up like catching on that no man this girl is staying elsewhere you know so i really had to stay undercover in a way when it comes to like youtube and stuff so i couldn't really post there um i just really abandoned my life and um like the things that i love to do and literally everything was just on hold and i was basically just focusing on my partner and my partner's life you know um to a point where like even my dreams and stuff were put on hold like dead ass like the things that i wanted to do things i wanted to start i didn't even think of doing them i didn't even think of starting them because i was focused on the other person in the relationship so i do think you should still like have your own life you know go out with your friends even though you are staying with your partner once in a while go out with your friends do the things that you love to do you know still make time for yourself you know you are still someone that needs to be taken care of you still need to think about yourself even though you are staying with your partner even though um things might get like tense in terms of like i don't know these things do come up these problems do come up sometimes they're not even problems and sometimes it shouldn't even be an issue i was just very horrible at um handling the situation and this whole cohabiting um situation and i guess because also i was very 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 young you know i was still too young to be in that situation and yeah and i feel like at some point my mom even my parents could see it at some point not my parents let me leave my dad out of this because i like you know i i just am always with my mom talking to my mom calling my mom so she could see this more actually i don't think my dad knew that i was in a relationship at the time but my mom could see this at some point like when i would come back home and she would just be like i feel like you've got so much on your plate and it just kind of made me sad at some point because like i knew that like it was a lot like it was a lot of pressure you know it was a lot to deal with and on top of that school as well so whenever she'd mention it i would get a bit like sad and stuff because i knew that she was right and that it is a lot on my plate but i literally just brushed it off and stuff but yeah i really do feel like my mom could sense in a way that 
I'm just dealing with a lot. Um, but yeah, um, another bad thing that came with this whole cohabiting situation in terms of like my experience is that um, I did, it did get in the way of me and my family a lot, you know, because like during holidays, I would constantly want to come back to Cape Town and it's just like, it was just too early for me to come back. And I'd always just fight and be like, no, I want to go back. And my mom just wouldn't understand why this child wants to go back so soon, you know. And also during a pandemic as well. Guys, I was literally just going crazy. And I feel like because I wasn't mature enough to deal with such a situation, you know, to the point where it was getting in the way of my family and I. And God forbid if this happens again where a relationship gets in the way of um, my relationship with my family. But anyway, um, those are one of the things I regret. I really do regret like um, letting it get in the way of that. And just how my mindset was at the time, I was just always ready to jump whenever this person said, no, come see me, come do that. <clears throat> But yeah, um, I did do a whole lot of growing up actually during this relationship and I'm actually grateful for that. That's why I don't regret anything that's happened in that year and the whole fight and sit situation is because I really learned a lot during that time. You know, I really grew up a lot and yeah, so those are like one of the pros and cons of the whole cohabiting situation. Um, I asked a few questions actually um, So you guys can like ask me any questions concerning Cohabiting concerning my experience, you know, just anything you guys would like to know and the few questions that I got so the first question that someone asked was um, Friends coming over question mark boundaries how you split the bowls So I'm gonna speak on my experience and then I'm actually gonna comment on how I think it should be um, but obviously I think it also depends on the person you're dating, you know, if both of you are like students Let's say for example, you are gonna have to go half and half 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 on bills and things like that um, But obviously if you're dating someone older like for example my situation I didn't really have to use any of my money, you know, the person was very like providing very giving so I never really had to worry or stress about like um, using my own money or splitting any type of bill or splitting anything for like groceries and stuff. So um, I was fortunate enough in that situation, but I did want to here and there contribute, you know, because like you do, I don't know how you guys are, but the type of person I am, I can't really fully depend on someone else. I do want to chip in here and there. I'm not going to just want to sit down and leech off from you, you know, be a leech. So friends coming over, um, it was okay for friends to come over, you know, it wasn't much of a problem. I did have my friends come over here and there. Um, boundaries. I don't know, uh, there's not much I can say about boundaries. There were hardly any rules actually when it came to like our situation. Um, next question was, would you do it again? Um, I would definitely do it again and obviously I would be okay with doing it again because I have experience, I know what to do and what not to do and just how to work my way around it whereas this was my first time in like first year and I really just didn't know how to go about it, you know. Um, okay, next question. How does one get used to living with someone if they used to live alone? So I was not really used to living alone because staying in res is not necessarily staying alone. I mean, I saw my friends every single day, every single night. So I was not necessarily living alone. And before staying at res, I was staying at home with my parents. So I never really stayed alone. So it was not much of a train smash for me, not much of a change. Um, so how you can get used to it, I guess, is just getting used to it. <laughs> There's really not much you can do but just having to get used to it day by day, you know, taking it one step at a time, one day at a time. And also just like getting used to your person and seeing how they live and them getting used to you and seeing how you live and trying to like 
work your way around that you know and getting used to how each of you love my english bundles but you understand what i'm saying you know um next question did it just happen so this is asking about my experience so um did it just happen or did y'all have a discussion about about it prior to you moving in um honestly it just happened it really just happened and yeah we never had a discussion about it at all like we really never had a discussion about it we were never like okay we're gonna stay together this is how things are gonna go blah 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 no it just really happened like we just went with the flow and the flow ended up with me staying with him basically um yeah i mean there was a time where he was like you're gonna pack all your stuff and just like move in you know so i guess that was kind of like a discussion but barely because that's where it ended but yeah we didn't really have like a formal discussion about it that like okay i'm going to move in i'm actually still supposed to be doing my makeup because um yeah there's still a few things i didn't do um next question is so do you cook clean for him and stuff so i did kind of touch base on this when i was like trying to give you guys a summary of um how my cohabiting situation went and i did mention that i was cleaning i was cooking you know so yes i do cook and clean for him that's another thing i don't like about fat and sit is you end up doing wifey duties without a ring you know you end up behaving like a wife when you're not even a wife like you know where's the ring where's all of this so that's one thing i don't like about it um but yeah i didn't even mind because obviously i love the person one thing about me like when i love you i don't mind to do anything for you anything and everything for you so i didn't mind at the time i mean yes to a point it got too much where like i was just complaining like no man i'm just always cooking i'm just always cleaning you know um but most of the time i really just didn't mind doing all of that stuff so yeah next question how did it affect your personal growth in terms of buying your own things how did it affect your independence one thing about me it will never ever ever affect my independence nothing will ever affect my independence because um i don't know i've just always wanted to be independent always 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 still want to be independent so no matter how much a guy takes care of me, how much he provides for me, how much he does for me, I'm always going to want to have my own and do it for myself eventually in life when I can. So it never really affected me independently. I still did things by myself, for myself, you know. I never asked him for anything, actually. I would never ask him for anything. He would just always do things because he wanted to. And then, yeah... I still always wanted to do things by myself so it never really affected that too much so after putting on the blush and kind of like contouring I just want to contour more upwards because I want the snatched look um I also want a bit here. Okay, next question is How does one deal with wanting to be alone but when you get space you want to go back because you miss the person? So I did kind of touch this a little. Um, one thing about me and my situation actually, I really didn't see the need to get a break from this person because he was just always away, always working, you know, so. I didn't really necessarily need a break from him but whenever I like did try to give him her, a break or like to give him his space I would go out with my friends but not as much actually I'd go out with my friends but that's literally all I did because he was hardly at home so I never really got the experience of that um, but yeah let me just read the question again so I can try and give you advice. How does one deal <clears throat> with wanting to be alone, but when you get space, you want to go back because you miss the person? 
I think this touches base on what I said earlier about like having another place to stay of your own um, or just being close to home so that like if anything happens or if ever one needs a break you can go back to your place or go back home for a while and then once you feel like okay I've given this person enough space or I've given myself enough space to breathe I can go back you know so just go back to your <clears throat> original place of residence, you know, go there maybe for like a weekend or for a week and then go back after that weekend or after that week, you know, and then just work like that, work that way, you know, every weekend maybe go back to your place or go back to your home and then during the week go back and stay with your partner or it can be the other way around. What happens when y'all argue and you want to leave? Does he kind of force you to stay there because he's scared of losing you? Um, honestly, in my experience, what I can say is whenever we argued or whenever we fought, it wasn't to a point where like he would um, chase me out or anything like that or we couldn't like still stick around each other no we still could stick around each other and stuff and like i said he was hardly ever at home as well so it wasn't much of a train smash but i was very dramatic so whenever i would like be really really angry or would like get in a fight or whatever i literally pack all my stuff and say that i'm going and around the time where res was an open i would go stay at my friend at that time's place you know she had her own place so I would go stay by her place so yeah that's what happened that's what i'm saying guys it's just so important for you to have a second place to go to if things go south or whenever you need a break just always have another place to go to because if you really fully just depend and rely on staying with your partner where are you going to go to when things don't go the way you want them to go do you understand what i'm saying so yeah um and no, he, he did not force me to stay, actually, whenever I would, like, pack and leave. He did not force me to stay. One thing about, like, my ex, he was 100% sure and knew that, like, I would come back, you know? So, <clears throat> he was never really scared because he knew that, like, listen, this girl loves me. So, never really had that type of fear of losing me until one day but it's fine <laughs> it's okay story for another day um how did your parents feel about the cohabiting my parents didn't know about it um yeah they did not know about it at all um yeah they didn't know even though i think at some point my mom kind of had like an idea of like what is going on what is actually happening but she never actually really mentioned it to me so i don't think she knew or maybe she was just minding her business i don't know but i never told them that i'm cohabiting and i tried hiding it as much as possible from them so i can't really tell you how my parents felt about it so yeah because they never really knew about it um, was going to see your friends a challenge at the time? No, it wasn't. I literally could do anything and everything I wanted to do. But at some point, I just started forgetting about my life and, like, my friends and stuff. And I was just so focused on the relationship, you know. Um, was he controlling? Basically wanted you close to him all the time? No, not at all. I mean, whenever I was back at home, yes, he'd um always want me to come back that was like the only controlling that was there and him wanting wanting me to be around him that was the only part but when it comes to me being there at the house he never really was controlling or wanting me to be around him all the time because also he was just very busy um do you guys have curfew for each other <laughs> this is funny no we don't we did not um, how does your mom feel about this? Like I said, she didn't know. I don't think she knows. I don't know. I really don't know her mom. I, I don't know if my mom knows to this day about what was happening. But yeah, guys, those are all the questions that you guys asked me. And I hope um, this video was a bit 
I don't know, informative. I hope it was an informative video and um, you guys learned a thing or two about like this whole situation. I mean, like it's a very famous situation. Everybody is doing this nowadays and um, yeah, like I'm not saying I condone this. I'm not saying um, I'm for this, but um, I do still feel like it needs to happen just so that you can see how a certain person lives, you know, because some things you can tolerate, some things you can't tolerate, you know, I mean, like, what if your partner is, like, the worst person to stay with and you don't know this because you haven't, like, cohabited with them and, 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 so I do think it is kind of an important stage that needs to be experienced because, like I said, what if you just cannot tolerate how a person lives you just need to know what you're getting yourself into you know so thank you guys so much for watching this video i will do more of these sit down videos like i said in the beginning of the year that we're going to put vlogs on hold a bit or we're just going to do less vlogs more sit down videos so please do comment down below any type of sit down videos you guys want me to do any type of topics you want me to discuss let me know as well if you like my makeup and you like my new makeup routine um yeah let's just have a conversation down below in the comment section um what did i say let's just have a discussion down below in the comment section and thank you guys so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in my next one